Hey, welcome to Barley and Hops. I'm George. Uh, today we're going to do the uh, TA4 uh, PID controller, the proportional integral derivative. And you remember we did the ink bird, uh, and I told you we would get to the rest of them. So I'm getting them slowly but surely. We're going to get through them. But I thought now this is going to probably be a two-part video, only because. I think if you follow this one, it wouldn't matter which PID that you get, you're going to be able to wire it up yourself because we're going to walk through it step by step. Um, I'm going to show you how we wire it, but I'm going to describe how it's wired and how they're numbered. Because really the only difference, primary difference between the PIDs are the pin locations and the numbers. Other than that, everything else kind of remains the same. It still does the same job. Now remember we talked about the PID. Um, and we talked about how what it does is it kind of levels out your power demand uh, and, and make, gives you an opportunity to track a more precise temperature. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for more precision in temperature. Um, and that's the head temperature. We do that via, I got a lot of stuff here, the thermal couple that goes in the top of the still, or this can go inside a bucket, or it anything that you're trying to control the temperature in and it senses the temperature sends that information via the wire to your PID controller which now remember it thinks about what the temperature is what the temperature you want because you set it then it tries to figure out what is the difference what is the requirement to get there once I get there what's your requirement to maintain that so instead of being an on off switch I'm gonna allow it to happen just enough to stay there and it'll manage it'll balance that temperature out for us because it'll think through that process using a derivative and it's an integral process that's derivative so it provides proportional power whoa PID proportional integral derivative imagine that now there are some minor differences or well really major differences in some PIDs and I learned this from the last time that I did this I ordered a bunch of PIDs, they all came in, and, and man, I started trying to wire them up, and it wouldn't work. I was like, oh, something's got to be wrong. Well, there is, there is a, T, a TD4 SNR, and I had a couple of TD4 RNRs. Well, I had to do a little bit more research, and I thought I knew enough about it, but evidently, no one knows everything. So, it does come with some kind of... The instructions are kind of complicated, so you got to read four or five times and do a little bit of research. The real difference is, is the one that we want, of course, is an SNR. An SNR. And what that represents is the S represents a... Doggone it, come on, George, you got to find it. Right here it is. A solid state relay logic. That's how it operates. It's an output. The N represents none and then the R represents a relay so it's an SNR now an RNR is a relay none and a relay which would have been internal and we know that because of the power demand using the internal relay on a PID is not going to help us because it will not withstand the power surge so we use the external relay and that's why we need an SNR so that should really make sense. So if you order one, make sure you order the one that says, and I'm going to write this down so it's a lot clearer. It should be a TD4SNR. And that should be written right on the side of the box, TD4 model, TD4SNR. And this one will say, you know, plus SSR40 which is a solid state relay. And that's the separate relay, which, let me open this box and I'll show it to you. That's the solid state relay that they send you that comes with it. So, and some will come with it, some will come without it, and you have to order it separate. But just make sure you get at least a 25. This is a 40, so this will definitely handle uh, what we're trying to do, but uh, up to a, 20, a 25 is about as low as you want to go. Because remember, we're dealing with 12 and a half to 15 amps and you want to make sure you got the proper uh, proper power oh. so uh, if you happen to order one and it says R&R &R, and you try to wire that up you'll be dumbfounded it just won't work so just be forewarned all right I've got that now this TD4 could be a TA6 it could be an ink bird 
but in any case, whatever the model number is, just make sure it's an SNR. All right, now let's get to it because this is what makes it so much fun is being able to explain this so that regardless of what you order, you could order the Inkbird, the TA, the TD, the C100, uh, the Rex. Uh, you could order, oh, there's a couple other ones. I think there's a Belima. Uh, there, there's a bunch of them on the market, and they all run different prices. But interestingly enough, they all come in SNR or RNR, so we know we're going to buy the SNR. But they're all wired, and they operate the same way. The real difference is, or are, the pin locations on the back. And in this particular case, it has 12 slots. It only has 10 pins. We left these two off because they're not even on here, so uh, th th there's no sense in writing them. And on the side, there is a sticker, and it tells you what every pin does and what every wire goes to. So we're going to explain that in some detail so that when you look at that, it's not Greek to you. You'll be able to understand what it means. Um, we're going to have, when we also, when we do the second part of this video, we're going to try to have a second camera kind of watching as we're discussing and describing so that way we can do some other shots and you can see exactly what's going on inside the box. Now, so we've got this PID and we've got pins 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. All right, 11 and 12 are not on the TD4. 9 and 10, we don't even use them so we'll go cross them out. We're only worried about the first eight pins. And they're also, now they're numbered on the side here, now they're also numbered on each pin, so you'll be able to see it. This, it you can't confuse it. This says 90-260V. That's 90 to 260 volts. So this will withstand, it'll take whatever you put into it, 90 to 260 volts. We're going to be providing 120 volts. And in a 120 volt current, the 120 volts, you're going to have a black wire, and I actually do have a white pin here, but if I wrote on the board with white, you wouldn't see it. Uh, and you're going to have a white wire. Now, they also you also have a green wire in your housing or in your circuit. And the green wire is always ground. Green means ground. So this is a ground wire. The white wire is known as the neutral. And the black wire is known as the hot. So once you connect these two together, you're going to have 120 volts. That's what that is. So you got a white wire and a black wire. The black wire is a hot, carries a load. The white wire brings it back. That's the neutral, in theory. There, there's a little bit more going on than that, but that makes it real simple. That simplifies it, uh, at least for my mind. So I make it easy. Now, it doesn't matter, really, which you do. I always put the black one on the number one and the white one on number two. But it, it'll work either way. So you'll connect 90 to 260 volts. There's going to be 120 volts. So you got number one black in and the white. Now that's going to operate the PID. That's where the PID gets all its power from. Now you got a couple of other options on here too. Now remember, we're going to be running the solid state relay. Where did I put that? I laid it down somewhere. I've got another one laying here somewhere too. But that's what happens when you get a whole bunch of stuff laying right here. It is your solid state relay. Now on the solid state relay itself, you're going to have, it's going to look like this. It's just going to be a square and it's going to have four screws on it. And they are going to be numbered one, two, three, and four. Now, on this, you're going to know, you're going to see, it'll, 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 actually they write it. Input is 3 to 32 volts direct current, DC. And it's also marked as a negative and a positive, which makes, that's an important factor you need to keep in mind. Now up here is 24 to 380 volts of AC and makes no difference. 
okay? So this is going to be the input, this is the output. So the power you provide is going to leave here and go to wherever you want it to go. And in this case, it's going to be our heater band or our heater coil or whatever it is we're using the heat with. This is the information that's going to come in to tell it to go on and off. Uh, the PID is going to tell how much to go on and off, but this is going to tell it to go on and off so it handles the power. So we've got, we've got the solid state relay, the SSR. And that's what that is. That's a solid state relay. Notice here you've got SSR and it's written on the instructions. Solid state relay. Positive num pin number four, negative pin number three. If we took a wire from pin number four and we ran that positive to the positive of pin number three, that's the first connection. Then we take pin number three on the PID and we run another wire to pin number four, which is also the negative on the SSR. We have now connected the PID to the solid state relay. So now when we set the PID and tell it, when you get to 60 degrees Celsius, I want you to go on. It's, as soon as it hits 60 degrees Celsius, it's going to send a signal to the solid state relay to turn on and the solid state relay will turn on. The PID will also send a power signal through the power line on how much power to push through the solid state relay. Makes sense. But now all we gotta do is figure out how does the PID know what the temperature is? That, believe it or not, is the easiest part. On your description and on the diagram, it's also gonna say TC, thermocouple. They make it so easy. All of them are written the same way. You've got a pin number seven, pin number eight in this particular case. Some of them are 12 and 13, nine and 10, six and five. Pin number seven is the negative. Again, this will make a difference. So you'll hook the negative connection to the negative connection on your thermocouple and the positive connection to the positive connection on the thermocouple. Now, when the thermocouple senses the power or the, uh, the temperature, it will tell the PID what the temperature is. The PID will develop the algorithm on what, when, and how much. It will tell the solid state relay to turn on. And at the same time, it's gonna provide that power through the solid state relay because the white wire is gonna go back and connect to everything. There'll be another black wire that'll come out here. And this black wire will go to the other black wire will go to the heater. So the thermal couple will consider, go through its algorithm, it will think, how much do I need, when do I need it, and do I need it right now? If all of that is yes, they turn on the solid state relay, push the power through, the measured amount of power, the power goes all the way through, the thermal couple continues to sense, and when it reaches its point, it says, okay, it doesn't need it anymore. It tells the PID, okay, we got that, we're there. The PID says, great, now it compares the turnoff period from the turn on period, the amount of difference, the time it took. It goes through its algorithm and goes, okay, now we'll just wait and see. Let's reach back and test it again. The thermal couple keeps sending information. And then the PID says, okay, on a little bit. Okay, off a little bit. On, stay on just a little bit longer. Okay, that's enough. Uh-oh, you're getting a little bit too cold. Let's give you a whole bunch of power. Bring it back up. Okay, let's balance it out. And then it, eventually, your PID will send just enough power to maintain that perfect temperature. That's how it works. It's as simple as that. So what we'll do now is, and I've got a lot of other stuff here. I've got, my goodness, this is the box. Now, this looks like a holy mess, but we're gonna, this is the first one we made, uh, and that's what we made with the ink bird. Uh, and we'll clean it up and we're going to make it really, really easy. I've got a receptacle, uh, a switch, I've got some wire connectors. You know, I've got everything else I think I need uh, of my amp meter. Uh, what I do believe I'm going to do on this one, though, is I'm going to add a DC fan. This is a little computer fan, you know, like in the side of the box. 
just for ventilation because it's going to get a little warm in there because I do have a heat sink, excuse me, for the uh, solid state relay. But just to be safe, I got one of these cheap fans and then I got a transformer. And this is a 12 volt transformer. Uh, this is a 12 volt fan. Now, and, and I'm going to I'll mount that in here, I'll wire that into it as well, and I'll show you exactly how all that's done so that we can turn the switch on and turn the fan on. We can turn the switch on and we can control the water pump. Uh, the PID will control the heater element. Uh, we'll make this as simple as we possibly can, but at the same time, we're going to take it to the next level so that you'll have all kind of different controls and you can have fun with it. So let me give you an idea what all this ran us. Um, it, when, I, when I added it all together, I've got, all right, um, I think f six bucks for the amp meter. So that's six, uh, about six bucks for the fan. That's 12, about six bucks for, that's 18. Um, Three dollars, that's 21. Uh, Four dollars, that's 25. Um, let me see, the PID was, I think, 30. 25, there's 55 in the box. That's uh, like 11 bucks. 55, 60, 66, something like it. So for 66 bucks, I'm going to have a high-speed, high-technology operating system that others will definitely charge me upwards to about $300 for. I know I've seen them online. Um, it, it's disgusting. All right, look, we're going to be back with you. Um, let me get all set up. I got some soldering to do because we're going to try to do this real safe. And, and then we'll get the other camera going and we'll give you a couple of different angles. So you hang in there and make sure you view... Uh, episode two of this, or part two, so we can get down to the nitty gritty of actually wiring this thing up and making it look right. Happy brewing.